you enjoy. What is going on everyone? It's John Gab here. And in today's video, we've got another video with one of my coaching students, Blaze, who I worked with for around six weeks, a bit over that as well. We've been going back and forth ever since we started working. Now we have a friendship and Blaze went from making around like 3K a month, went up to 30K and now he's doing around 10K a month, big commissions within that. But Blaze is a great guy um, and he's going to basically today to share his story um, from his journey and add as much value to you guys as possible watching. So take notes and uh, enjoy his story. So Blaze, if you want to reintroduce yourself as well and we'll get into this. Hey guys, so my name is Blaze. I run a marketing agency, uh, a social media marketing agency, obviously. And we have fitness entrepreneurs and fitness influencers to scale up their info product. Uh, and I started my journey around two and a half year, yeah, two and a half years ago, I was, um, I was in the Netherlands studying masters, um, entrepreneurship and strategic management. Um, and I figured that it's bullshit, uh, because most <laughs> of the teachers out there, um, they didn't have a business. So I'm like, uh, how's it working then? Right. And so, you know, I went into the flow. I realized that probably they are not the most believable people to learn from. Um, started to Google things as you know, anyone would do find a lot of crap. Um, and I thought those scraps are going to work for me. So I tried them out, you know, had four or five different businesses. I would, I would rather call them side hustles. I tried to make money online. Uh, you know, had this, you know, had this vision in my mind that I'm just going to make millions with that, you know, Instagram automation or, you know, web shop or whatever it was. Um, but the one thing was sure every single time I was like super passionate and I went all in, um, and so at one point I started a marketing agency, but I felt terribly. I had a business partner. It didn't work out. We didn't know how to price, how, how to sell. We, we wanted to do full service. So we were like, complete, like we were like complete bullshit. And so then I reiterated it again. Uh, you know, I had a different business partner. We restarted, we went after gyms, um, first in Hungary, then in the UK, again realized that that's not something i'm passionate about it so i eventually give give up and then um you know after many many iterations i find this niche um you know being a guy i'm a fitness guy I did natural bodybuilding crossfit powerlifting realized that it's not really about where you can make the most money because i know you know most people watching most people are you know you know just going after niches and <laughs> Most guys have in their mind that it's either e-commerce or info product and it's just like laser focused on the, you know, on these two niches. And there are like many, many other very good niches outside of the money making info products and the e-commerce. Uh, and so if, you know, there is one single piece of advice I learned from myself and from my stories, think about what you are good at. Think about what you enjoy doing. And if you want to build an agency, combine the two, right? So that's really my story in a nutshell. Cool, Blake. So let's get straight into this. I want to ask you, right? What do you think it was that made you go for like years of trying businesses out? Shiny object syndrome after shiny object syndrome. And <laughs> this is my story as well. We've both been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think it was, right? Because it clearly wasn't the strategy or the tactic because other people were successful in that area. Maybe it was passion. But what do you think it was that kind of prevented you from hitting that business from like the first business you tried and not succeeding at it? The biggest one that it's on top of my head was that um, I haven't really understood that in order to make something successful, you need to have a proven process and you need to follow the advice of someone who's already done it before. Like mm -hmm. that's crucial. And so when I started, I haven't so, and, and I didn't understand that there is a massive, you know, there's a massive online education business out there, there for you to help you to get to the next level. And so, and so I just tried, I just Googled and YouTube, then I tried to like glue it, glue it together, but I was missing pieces of the puzzle. And we, and you know, John, and I know as well, if you miss one single piece, let it be sales, <laughs> let it, it be service, even, whatever it is, if you have 85% of the stuff figured out, but you miss one single puzzle piece that is, you know, takes out like that other 15%, you're not going to, you're not going to succeed. You're going to, you're going to be there, you know, miserable, trying to, trying to ask questions like, why is it not working? I don't understand. So to me, that was, um, once I understood and I bought Iman's program, you know, John, you have the program too. Once I brought the program and I understood, wow, like this is how you put it together. It makes yeah. so much sense now. That's when the magic happened to me, really. Yeah. I think that's uh, very relatable there as well, Blaze, because 
I think when we have this idea of doing anything, right, whether it's getting the physique we want, setting up a business, we always kind of go into it. We get this dopamine rush and we're like, oh, this is yeah. easy. Like, that's all I've got to do. And then we think we can figure it out by ourselves. And we try and take the kind of pathway of least resistance, make shortcuts. But then little do we know that that's the longer way to do it. So it's just easier to go, all right, this is what I'm going to do. There's, here's the plan. I'm going to invest in a program, take the action steps and run with it till I succeed. But we give it a month or two and then we're like, oh, this isn't working out. And then we kind of jump to the next thing and then, oh, this isn't working out. And we just go down this spiral. And that's why, how long was your journey before you saw success? Mine was like three and a bit years of like failing terribly. What about yourself? Um, I just wanted to add, I just wanted to add something into the mix. So, you know, finding those courses online and downloading them or getting a body to give you the login, it's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> it's just oh. like, and it's it's amazing like it was to me because i thought because i thought i can just save money download those courses and you know i'm just gonna figure it out but i have a little do i know little did i know that i need to put my money towards something in order to fully commit 100%. right so i was just what i was just sitting there having many good courses watching them eating chocolate bars you know just like <laughs> trying to make it happen having the knowledge but i never really been like all in once i spend my money <laughs> that's what that's what happens that's what i would Blade. say you asked yeah. how long ago i was kind of messing around be before i actually saw the first sign of success so i closed the hungarian gym um after i would say nine nine months in so i was nine months in um i had i had a client before but it was like a trial client it was like yeah. it was even like a hundred us dollar per month right so we literally just, you know, was testing with their ads. We didn't really did too many things. So the first, first proper client, and I, that was a thousand dollar per month client that came after eight or nine months, um, after actually cold, cold over a hundred, uh, fitness facilities in Hungary and <laughs> cold, attended, cold calls are painful, man. Yeah. I, I did like a hundred, over a hundred cold calls, like hundred separate businesses calls. So that, yeah. that would add up to like two, 300, you know, picking up the phone. And then I had around like eight to eight, eight to 15 meetings. I'm, I'm not too sure. I can't really remember, but it was, you know, around like eight to 15 meetings, sitting down, getting notes. And finally, there was this guy who said, all right, why not? Let's, let's do this. And I, and I was like, I was sitting, I was sitting there. I'm like, okay. What do I do now? Really? <laughs> I was like, sure. Cool. Oh, <laughs> so no, sure, you know, the feeling, I can relate right? to that as well. I think it's kind of, it's really interesting, right? I want to, before we continue with that part there about when you were saying you got your first client, going back to the part where you said, when you get free courses or you get free information, it's going to be harder for you to work. This is, everybody watching my channel, they know I always talk about mindset over skill set. Now, what do you think it is, Blaze, right? I think I know the answer, but by not investing in yourself and thinking you can just kind of figure it out by, by yourself, it can work that way, but for most people, it can't. What do you think it is about investing the money or the time or the energy and committing that impacts your mind to make you go, all right, I'm going to make this work no matter what. What do you kind of think that is? It's really hard, hard to tell, but I feel like you, if you don't have a lot of money, that's, that's when it works the, the, like the best. If you don't really have a lot of money, which I see most people in our shoes trying to find out how to do an online business when I do, um, or, or in the position, then once you spend a significant amount of your um your wealth on something then you're gonna put your energy and your and your mindset and literally anything and your belief system around that thing and yeah before you don't do that you would always be like well i can if it, if it didn't work if it doesn't work out i can just maybe i can just download that e-commerce uh, you know skyrocket you know course that that, that was pretty epic i yeah, like so this one is really complex. How about downloading that one? You know what I mean? And so you never really fully commit. So it's all about the commitment and your, and your time and energy. Where you put yeah, it. That's, that's what I think it is as well. Um, I think it's kind of like the belief system behind it. You know, if you kind of get it for free, you're basically saying, well, I've got a plan B in the background. So if, if I don't invest my money, then if it doesn't work, then it's okay. So you're entering that business model with the chance it's not going to work. Right. And I think and it's not, it's not going to work. <laughs> it's not. Right. Yeah. Like, even if it does, right, I believe, you know, I've had it before where I had e-commerce, right, and I've had a little bit of success, but it would it dip straight yeah. back down. 
it wasn't until I invested in Iman, right? And I went to the guy's mastermind. I dropped like $5,000 there, invested yeah. in his course, invested 10K in a mentor called Brandon. Did I start to get the results I wanted? And that's, that's when it changed me. And I think it was that removing that scarce mindset of, oh, holding on to this money is going to be good for me, right? I got on the call with Iman. I said, cool, how much is your mastermind? He told me the price. I said, let's get this going. Whereas the old John would be like, oh, um, yeah, let me think about it, right? Oh, and again, it's that subconscious kind of shift of going all in that allows you to get the results. So, Blaze, I guess my next question for you, right? On your journey, and we were talking about this before this call, you've got to that point now where you're making good money. And back when Blaze first started off, you would dream to be in a position you are now. But since you've got to that position where you're making good money, right? What kind of shifts have you had, first of all, to get there in terms of your internal world and your mindset? But mm. secondly, what do you, what's, what's changed in your perception now that you've got to where you wanted to get to in terms of your, your outlook on business and entrepreneurship in general? Okay, um, let's start with the mindset because that's probably an easier to answer. Um, I would say... I kind of better understood that in order to get uh, from A to B, it's not enough to just hustle every day <laughs> towards the goal, <laughs> but you need to properly plan it, right? You need to be sure that you follow the plan, right? Whatever it means to you, uh, because there are like, you know, gazillion different trackers and worksheets and, 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 and actually it's like, just try to follow one like don't try to find the best one there's no there's no best one out there uh just you know try to follow one process but like do it well like just if you if you commit to do something every single day um just really do it like don't look for excuses don't look for um off days or don't don't do that because yes you can do that later but when you actually want to get into a habit there are no off days right and so that's something to me that was big when I, when I decided that this is what I want to do. I just I really need to go after. Um, let me think a little bit. Mindset-wise. Obviously, I improved a lot in the way I saw, like the way I did sales. Um, in the beginning, I little do I know that it is so important, right? Um, I thought I can just sell people and that's it i never really understand that um what are the the psychological game behind sales and how complex it could be and how much you need to actually simplify your own game you know with all the you know yeah. complex information you need to really have one you know concise um way to do it that really fits your personality fits who you are um and so i guess that's that's, that's actually really hard so you need to put in a lot of time into sales um, as well as I think having people, having people that you can trust, you know, not micromanaging yeah. them, but just like really trust them. Um, that was the hardest one. So that was not the mindset mindset shift really, but that was part of your question as well. Um, and in order that to, to happen, I believe you just need to, it's, it's a trial and error. So you need to start it as soon as you can. If you don't have like higher, like, whatever it's higher VA for $4 per hour, right? Just like, even if you don't have anything to delegate, just hire someone and try to figure out how can you work with yep. someone? Because the sooner you get, you get started with that, uh, the sooner you can get into the place where you have a couple people under your, um, yeah, under your supervision. Exactly. I think, yeah, getting started before you're ready. But what's interesting about this interview with you, Blaze, is my kind of philosophy, a lot of my videos and even my other people I've worked with and, I, and I've made interviews with, we heavily talk about mindset and we talk about uh, limiting beliefs, visualization, um, removing yeah. resistance and stuff. But with Blaze, it's, it's an interesting example of some people just perform differently. So Blaze is very logical what I'm taking away from it. You're just like, All right, I need to plan. I need to do the work every day and be disciplined. And I need to just hustle and, and get my shit done. And I find that very interesting because it just goes to show not everybody has a specific way to do something. And this is why, again, yeah. There's so many people out there like quote unquote gurus who say this is the best outreach method or this is the best business model to start, but it all depends on the individual and the person who's going after it. So I think that's what even working with you, Blaze, I realized you're very independent and you just kind of do it your way and it worked, right? So yeah, let's talk about that. So you've applied your strategies. You've got to where you've got to now. Since you've got to the level where you've dreamed of getting to, when you look back, right? 
what were some of your misconceptions about making like 10K months is going to be the best thing ever, right? What's been your misconceptions? Mm. How have you changed as a person? And what would you tell somebody now who's trying to get to 10K a month, who's like, like dreaming of it every single day, they're not there yet. What would you tell them now? So the first thing I would tell them is don't like, don't go for 10K <laughs> because, and that's my biggest, like, that's my biggest thing really. I had this, I had this 10K in my mind when I started my business, right? And so I live in, um, I live in Eastern Europe um, and over here, 10K is a lot of money. Like you can rent out a place for like, I don't know, like three, 400 US dollar for like a proper place, like a really good one. Um, and so I should have gone for like 3K, right? Or maybe 4K. And so I should have gone to three and 4K because I needed money to feel good about myself, who I am, you know, buy the stuff I actually wanted to buy. And that would boost my, boost my, you know, my competence and my confidence a little bit so I can close better deals and, and, you know, increase my lifestyle so I can, you know, hire someone to clean out my space, you know, I can hire someone to get food for me, all the, all the necessary things that saves you time. Right. And then once I was done like three or 4k, I should have focused on, okay, good. Now I have the money for the, for yeah. the basics. Now, what do I actually want to do? If money doesn't matter, right? What, what, what am I super passionate about? And so that's what I, that's what I should have done instead of us focusing too much on money. That's one thing. The other one is, uh, and that was, that was insane to me, even though I heard it many, many times in podcasts and YouTube videos and from mentors and, even from yourself. And that was once you get, once you get a big retainer, once you get a really good month and you feel like, Oh yeah, that's, that's when I'm going to be like freaking happy. Right? Like that's good. I, I can feel like no. a freaking King. Once you get that, once I still remember the day I had an invoice, $38,000 um, in a single month as a retainer from our client, <laughs> I got the invoice and I was sitting in front, it was in the middle of COVID. I was alone at home. I got an invoice after working all day long and I looked at the invoice and first I was super happy for like two minutes. Yeah. Then I tried to, then I tried to convince myself that I'm, I'm super happy. So I was like, for like five, <laughs> 10 minutes, I was convincing myself that I'm happy, put on some music, jumping around, but I was inside, I was not that happy. And then I sat down and I'm like, hmm, I miss my friends. That's it. To there me, we go, man. And to me, that was the biggest one. I was like, oh, that's, that's so good. Hard, so I, I, I need to spend more, I need to spend more time, whatever it is, you might miss your girlfriend, you might miss your sport, but whatever it is, you should do that more often, obviously, because that's like, that's not, not, not money shouldn't be the focus. That's really the biggest thing. Blaze, that is such a profound concept that I think a lot of people watching this won't be able to wrap their head around. They're going to look at it and go, if I made 38K, I'm going to, my life's set, right? But again, you kind of have to go through the paradigm to understand it. And even this month just gone by, I had my biggest retainer come through. And, you know, it's like before, the old me would be like, yes, I've hit this number now. Let me go and tell people about it. I'm going to be so happy. But I got the number, right? I was sitting there working in the morning. I look at it and I go, cool. And then I just got back to work. Right. And I think what I was, what I'm taking this is you, whoever's watching this and even for you, Blaze, you might learn from this as well. Fall in love with the process. And instead yeah. of trying to get to a goal, know why you want to attain this goal. So like for myself now, I'm trying to hit a, a bigger number in my business, but I know the vision and I know why I want to get there because it's going to allow me to help my parents out. It's going to allow me to live a different lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just falling in love with the process because I understand when I get to that number, it's not going to change me. And like Iman says, right, this is one thing I remember. It's like, wherever you go, there you are. So it's yeah. like, you've hit, you've hit nearly 40K from one client and you're still just like the same guy. You're still feeding yeah, the same, still happening. acting the same. Yeah. Bro, that is, that's insane, man. And I think I, it's, it's kind of hard again for people to, to fully understand this, but what would you say to them then? So you're saying money's not the goal, right? They're watching this right now. What's your one piece of advice for them? If they are trying to get to even, let's say their goal is to get to 40K a month, right? What would you say to them right now they should be doing? Well, sit down and spend a lot of time on, you know, reflecting 
on who you really are. Like I have on my Google Drive, I have so many trackers and worksheets as I was reading books, you know, watching videos, especially from Sam Owens. That was one of the biggest one for me. Um, I did every single tracker. It's like I, whenever it was a task, you know, write down this thing, the things you are good at, bad at, things you are afraid of, fears, all those. I, I, did, I did the action, actually took notes all the time. And so after you start to gather more and more of those notes, you can just sit down and start to synthesize the information, right? You can sit down and see, holy shit, you know, I write, you know, I don't know, I write BMX everywhere, even though I don't actively compete in BMX. Maybe there is something, maybe there is something for, you know, that I, I should go after BMX and maybe I should, that's just an example that was to me, one yeah. of the things. Um, so what I would say is do those tasks and try to figure out, you know, what is your, what is your core personality, who you are by the core. Um, and, and then it shouldn't be, the, it shouldn't be like, that's what I hear in most cases. And that's confusing to me when, you know, gurus say, you know, figure out your core and then figure out your purpose. And so the way I wanted to do is I tried to figure out like my purpose, the one thing that gives me shitloads of money, right? Or the <laughs> one thing, and, and then that's not the way to go. The way to go is it's, it's probably not gonna be one thing. It's gonna be one thing at a time, you know, one after another in circles until after, you know, you know, putting in 20, 30 years or whatever many years you need to put in, you find the core identity of yourself. And the way I imagine this to be, and this is just a simple example, let's say someone's, you know, core, you know, identity and purpose is to meditate and to find God, right? And so in order to get there, you need to try to, you need to fail different businesses. If you're an online entrepreneur, you need to, you need to try to do this social media marketing agency. Maybe you want to do a course. You, you need to try that. Um, you, maybe you feel like you figure that's not fulfilling and you want to get a dog, you get a dog and then you live with your girlfriend, you get the kids, you need to raise the kids. And after all the struggles and you're learning how you know, difficult it could be to live in, you know, to be in a relationship and to get good friends and all those things, you know, after everything, then you can find your core identity and your main purpose, you know, in my example, you know, being the guy who actually just want to meditate and find God. That's the way that you can actually get there. If you yeah, at course. the age of 15, you would be, mm, that might be my, you know, core identity and desire and desire. You just, you cannot go straight there. It's impossible. You need to experience a lot. And so don't like, that's what I would say. Don't be super fixated on, finding your one purpose in life and go off of that because in most, in most cases, what, what I experienced and when I talk a lot of, you know, other young entrepreneurs, that's what I found. If you want to do that right from the get go, from the age of 17, 18, whatever it is, sure, go for it, but don't be disappointed when you, after experiencing a little bit, tasting it a little bit, you shift focus because that's yeah, the yeah, way yeah. life is right it's just, it's just it's just the way i imagine it it's like a big freaking ocean and sometimes you feel like you find you know the find you know the land and you feel like oh yeah i'm on the right track i'm going for the land and then like freaking you know thunderstorm and waves and everything and then you don't know where you are that's life yeah 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 right? i agree with you man and i think to add on to that as well i think we all kind of, any online entrepreneur, we look at the business as like the end all be all. But I think we need to look at the business. And again, it depends. If you are a passionate businessman and you just want to grow businesses and make a load of money, that's completely yeah. fine. But I think what it is should be is like the business should sustain your lifestyle. And this is where I got caught up in as well. When I began yeah. my agency, I was working ridiculous hours, right? Hitting 15, 20K months. And I was like, wait, hold on. I'm not living the life I want to live. And I was trapped and I couldn't go out and do things. So I had to take a massive step back, remove a load of clients, go back from the beginning. So I could eventually get to the point now where I've moved out to Amsterdam. I have more freedom and I'm more happier. Right. But when we don't begin with a clear vision in mind of where we're trying to end up, we just end up anywhere. It's like going to the airport and then just getting on a random plane. And then you end up in some country you hate. And you're like, why am I here? Because you didn't know where you were trying to get to, to begin with. So, I think it's so inspiring in a way that you're saying this because so many people will be like, yeah, do this outreach method and just grow your business. But then you do all the hard work, you get the client and you're still confused and, and you're like, why did I do all this? So that's some, uh, some great advice there, please. Yeah. What, one thing I would add, because I don't know, I, I don't know about you, but I have this weird feeling that 
because we both talked a lot about shiny object syndrome, right? It's when you believe one thing is, you know, the greatest one and the easiest one and the most profitable one in comparison, comparing to the amount of work and resources you need to put in. And so once you figure out it's not, then the grass is always greener on the other side, aka you go after the next one. Now, what I, what, I, what I told previously about finding your core identity and having these you know, concentric circles that you need to, need to fulfill in order to just get to the core of it, I'm not, I'm, I don't mean that you start a business and when it's not working, you go for the next one and the next one and the next one. The way I, the way I think it should work is that you start something and when you feel like it's not fulfilling you anymore, you sit down, you block out whatever you need to block out, maybe two days, maybe a week, maybe two weeks. And you put in a lot of time asking friends, family members, you know, anyone around you, knowledgeable people to figure out whether you are just tired or maybe you just fall flat on your face or have you know, something problem in your life or whether you really need to go after something else, right? And so that's the way I usually go right now. And it might sound weird. I know I can scale this agency up. Like I'm confident I can scale it up to a hundred thousand dollars. If I want to, I just need to put in the work. I need to, what I need to, what help should I seek, you know, from what sort of experts and I need what I know, I know what I should do in order to get there. The true question myself in the last two months was, do I actually want to do that? Or maybe there is something in my life I want to do. Right. And yeah. what I realized and what I realized, is that to me the biggest one is to help guys like you know like you like everyone really in the online space or even offline if this is possible to help them to find their core identity because what i realized you know doing a lot of soul searching is that oh my god from the age of seven that's what i'm doing like i did so many sports i did so many different businesses I tried so many things and whenever I did something, I, I, I believe that's, that's the one thing. I went all in for every single thing in my life, right? And so now I'm, what I'm doing right now, now I'm trying to reverse engineer my story. Now I'm trying to reverse engineer what happened, why I shifted focus here and there, you know, why did it happen this way? And I learned so many interesting things, John. Um, I can't wait to put this actually in action. So that's really my new project that's going to be, that's what I'm going to go after, helping people, young entrepreneurs to find their core identity. And so the way it's, it's, it's like a never ending process really. But once you have, you know, good tools and good mentorship to go after, you can get better. You can, be, you can be happier, obviously. And then you can easily find your purpose in, in every, you know, part of your life. That's what I truly believe in. Yes, please. I, I agree with that so much again. And I think, you know, again it's going within and and asking yourself questions and i think a lot of the time i've been studying a lot as well about the self-identity right and a lot of the time there's resistance there there's kind of things blocking it so we ask a question and we just go no that's fine it's cool i'm I'm, I'm cool with that but in the in the subconscious mind we have these blockages or these limiting beliefs that really hold us back and i think once we can kind of discover those and, and remove them that's when we have those, those shifts. And going back to what you were saying before about growing your agency to 100K, I was having this discussion with another agency and a, um, one of my friends as well the other day. And we were talking about this and we were like, yeah, we can scale our agency to 100K. These are the strategies we can do. And after the call, I kind of got off it and I thought, do I really want that though? Do, yeah. do I really want to scale it? And, and I took Same a step back and, and I took a step back and I was, I was writing out my vision and I was thinking, this is how my lifestyle wants to go. And you know as well, I want to help entrepreneurs master their mindset. And I was like, this doesn't align with my kind of myself, like, like you said, the self-identity, the core image of myself, right? So gaining clarity and seeking answers from within is so underrated and it looks so like woo-woo and just like, oh, I don't need to do that. But I think it is the kind of the key. And this is where we're all going to end up whenever we're trying to grow our business or whatever we're trying to do. It's always going to come back to, you know, Am I happy with him? And if you're not, you then you're you go good around. Enough. Yeah, definitely, Blake. So, yeah, I, I think that will be a good way to to kind of end this off. Leave it uh, kind of sweet and and short there. But have you got anything else you kind of want to touch on, or anything you want to share? Let's see. You've got some wisdom sitting in there. I can tell. <laughs> I had some good ones when you asked me. You asked me what was the biggest realization for me um, when I had my breakthrough in the agency and I told you it was 
buying a course, right? And then the second one was once I learned to do sales and I had something else that was very, oh yeah, the biggest one, that's the biggest one. I wanted to touch on, touch on this one um, because I don't know how, how many of the people watching right now are um, in social media marketing, actually, like want to run an agency, but if there's only, you know, some of you it's worth mentioning, you know, most courses and most gurus are designed their program for UK, US, Canada, Australia based businesses, maybe Germany, right? And so I heard this a lot and I'm from Hungary. I've spoken with a lot of, from a lot of people, you know, those, you know, the average income from in Hungary and all these other, you know, um, Eastern European countries are so much different that you, it's really hard for you to make it work in a way that works for the gurus, right? And to me, that was, that was insane, right? Once I actually, you know, being a Hungarian guy, I was, I wouldn't say I was shy, but I was like, my English is not native. So why would I, you know, why would I try to make it work? I was just going with my native language. Once I shifted my focus, understanding that screw that, I don't want to be working with Hungarians at all. I don't even like their mindset, you know, <laughs> stupid as it sounds, but that's the truth. That's, that's the truth. And you know, I always say it, right? I, I'm not, I don't bullshit. So once I actually started to work with people from, you know, US, Canada, Australia, that's where everything and that's where everything changed to me so if there is only one guy you know you are from i don't know ukraine or slovakia or czech republic wherever you are from and you feel like you are in a in a low income um country then maybe this is something you want to consider and just just try it like just give it that yes. couldn't hurt just try it maybe your english is not the best that's just an excuse you go type into google italki you hire someone and that can help you in two three months or maybe like one, two months, your English is going to be like two times as good. And, and even most people don't really care if, if you know what you are talking about. So that's, yeah, Blaze, that's really interesting as well. So you, you said, right, when you was going after Hungarian clients at the beginning, you kind of thought, did you think about going after the US market and, and the UK? Yeah. But, but you thought, okay, so what was that? In, what was that in your mind? then? Because again, it's all, that's why I say mindset. It Interesting, isn't it? What do you think it was in your mind that made you go, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. Right. And, and, and those limiting beliefs there, I think if we can just shift our beliefs, right? Again, we are able to do anything. And, and Tony Robbins talks about this, right? It all begins with the belief because if we have a different belief, e.g. I can sign US clients for triple the price um, I'm charging for my Hungarian clients, that's going to lead to bigger action. So what was those limiting beliefs that held you back from just saying, let's go after these US clients? Well, first I was convincing myself that being a Hungarian, it's of a sunk cost mostly. So I need to leverage my, I need to leverage my knowledge on the culture. I need to leverage my, you know, skills on my mother tongue. I need to leverage um, the testimonials I have so far because I had like four or five okay-ish testimonials. Mm -hmm. And so those really, it was all sunk cost. It was all sunk cost. And like once I read the book from, I guess it was, the dip from Seth Godin, as well as um, I listened to one of the podcasts of Seth, uh, yeah, Seth, and it was about sunk cost. That's when, you know, it changed. I, I was like, I don't care. Like these sunk costs are holding me back all the time. And if I go back historically in my life, sunk costs were always there to me. And so that was the biggest one for me. Um, the second one is that I felt like in Hungary, with my knowledge, I'm like super unique and I can dominate the market, which was, which was true. Little did I notice that I don't even want to dominate the market, right? <laughs> because I didn't like the market. I never really understood that the clients that can pay you six, $7,000 per month are the big corporate clients in Hungary that in the US and UK would pay fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. And exactly the, those type of clients that most gurus like Iman himself want to stay away from for many, many reasons. I don't want to really go into the nitty gritty, but it's really about like, they are super corporate. They are really stiff. So it's yeah. really hard to work with them as a small boutique agency because that's what we run. And so to me, that to put it together, it took, it took a while, right? It's not out in the, you cannot Google that out. You need to speak yeah, yeah. a lot and you need to talk to a lot of knowledgeable people who's done it before 
being on a market and as well as you need to actually believe it you need to see it you need to screw it up to understand that yeah maybe it's right maybe i cannot be the guy you know having all the hunger and clients easy the big ones because he's super knowledgeable because the hunger and clients didn't want it me as a very knowledgeable guy to scale their ads they they was focusing on other things and it's not it, it was not their mistake it was my mistake because the, the market told me what they want right yeah of course of course that doesn't like going back to um sunken costs what does that actually mean what do you what do you define that as i'm never that phrase before well I, I don't really know the definition on top of my head but my definition would be is that when you have resources in most cases time and or money invested into something when you want to make a shift you want to make you know diff a different decision you want to go somewhere else you when you are making your decision put all the money and time you invested all the resources in a bag and you you take that as a pro not to make the shift right you use that as a pro argument while not to do that um again one of the one of the best ones the best examples i i have you know right now my brother david he he was a, a medical student third or fourth year and he was he, he wanted to quit for like half year maybe a year he was talking a lot he, he didn't like it he was this super smart dude he should have finished easily right he could have finished easily and so he started an online business he started to teach people how to um grow their brand on instagram mm -hmm. and he just you know phone called me as a couple of questions but he, he he figured it out for himself and now he has a business making i don't even know like he's making very good money and he, he, he never gonna finish medical school or at least that's what i think i, I don't believe he gonna so he had a lot of sunk calls because he already started the school yet he decided to ignore the sunk calls go after his vision his got passion it, got it there you go right that's in, i like that man i think that's a, a good kind of takeaway people can can take away from this video is like at the end of the day all right there's always going to be this scenario this scenario and i think just go with your gut at the end of the day and just kind of figure figure it out as you go like both of us even any entrepreneur when the society's like you need to go and get a job you need to do this you need to do that i said screw that i'm gonna book a one-way ticket to bangkok and just travel and see what happens and it paid off I man. That, so, I, that video. I, so i think that's how you gotta do it you just gotta like you said sunk costs and then go from there blades yeah yeah man so and Cool. Yeah, it's not it's not a decision for forever like you can always cool. in most cases in most cases you have to notice that you can go back to the life that you lived before exactly right and there's always i think society you know they they kind of project fear onto us like you only have one life and if you don't do this correctly it's all over and this is never the case like when we think about the worst case scenario in our mind that we thought about other, other situations does it happen never it never does rarely right so i said i like that i'm going to take that away from this video myself as well is it you can hear me i thought it froze for a second place so let me let me ask yeah, you this yeah, thing, yeah. Right? Frozen. let me ask you this place so from this whole interview right what's going to be your biggest takeaway maybe you learned something today and what's going to be the biggest takeaway that you would teach other people who have watched this video today because look, everybody can watch these interviews watch these videos online and then just go to the next video so what's going to be one piece of advice you took away and also one piece of advice you can give to the person watching this to actually go ahead and implement into their life after this video ends okay um one piece of advice i would give is the one and i just want to put and it's going to be the same thing actually but it's just going to be you know different side of the story it's going to be try to do whatever you can to find your core identity because from there every single decision and every single day of your life would be a bit i wouldn't it would be a bit easier or if it's not if not easier at least you would be happier with the with the harder tougher days that's what i would say um and as well like i can take that as a, as a as something i should take away from this interview as well to just take my own advice because as i told you nice. it's a never ending process so i am maybe i don't know i'm somewhere in the process i need to keep going every single day i should every single day i should do something to get closer to my core identity and the second one uh, since i and you know at the end of the day we all procrastinate right we all fear of things 
um, you, even people making a million, you know, million US dollar in a single month online, they fear of many, many things now. So what I would say is, I probably have many limiting beliefs um, when it comes to focusing more on helping people to find their core identity. I don't, I don't even know how to properly do this right now, right? I need to figure it out if I'm being very honest with myself. I can do this, do this offline with my friends with amazing results. So it happens. I, I understand that there is some sort of proof of concept. I'm truly, I 110% believe in it. But what I would take for my step and what I would ask from the audience is um, in the comments, guys, let me know how much you feel like it is something that you would value if I triple down on this one because I know I need to start creating educational content on this one and I am still procrastinating it. I have my camera over there, but I haven't figured it out. And so I need to do it um, as well as, um, as well as what would be interesting for you when it comes to this topic, what questions do you have? Just write like the questions are the best, you know, write me questions. What questions do you have? Because from those I can easily uh, start to navigate towards how should I start it? How should I help people? What would be the best way to do this? So, Nice, yeah, bit, nice, nice little plug there as well, right? But what I'm going to do anyway, I'm going to put your Instagram and okay, in fact, where can people find you? What's your Instagram? I'll put it in the description. But yeah, just, Instagram, just put it. I YouTube. just type it down because it's complex. I want to spell it. Um, yeah, okay. I'll, Instagram, I'll Instagram. Uh, I have some YouTube videos as well. Uh, not educational, but you're gonna. I, I promise you're gonna laugh a lot if you watch those back. How stupid I could be at times. That's that's real me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, those, those those are the two. Um, best ones and for Instagram what well, a lot of people told me that's valuable if you go to my Instagram I have many many story highlights if you want to learn about my story of how I actually um, got where I where I am right now you know just see the highlights of my story I have this SMMA one SMMA two three four I collected you know many many stories into those when I when I when I didn't felt like doing it when I was super excited so all the big ups and downs and so you can watch those back chronologically and a lot of people did that and they messaged me, dude, this is great. I love it. So nice, if, you want, nice, if nice. you want some inspiration, maybe um, that's the way to go. Cool, Blaze. So I'll put oh, your links sorry, below. Yeah. But um, yeah, Blaze, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Even I, I took a lot of stuff away as well. I'm going to implement. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. Go and check Blaze out on Instagram and I'll see you in my next video, guys. Blaze, thank you, man. Cheers, man.